Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Why do we let the government dupe us? Tonight, there is danger when the government is wrong. Periodically, the huge apparatus of the federal government uses its power to give us information about itself and about ourselves in the form of statistics. Whether it is the Department of Labor, the Congressional Budget Office, the Treasury Department, or even the Federal Reserve, the feds are fixated on statistics, and they use statistics to make things appear better than they are and to manipulate our thinking. For example, the government likes to tell us that the economy is not as bad as we all know it to be. But what if the government's systems of measurement were manipulated in a way so as to fool you about how healthy the economy really is? Here's an example. On Freedom Watch recently, Cato economist John Tamney argued that it's time to abolish the GDP. This is one of the federal government's favorite yardsticks, but it is a trick and a joke. GDP, which stands for Gross Domestic Product, is the way the government measures prosperity. Now bear with me on this. I know it sounds technical, but it's really quite simple. GDP is the sum total of all economic activity in the United States. It includes all sales and all purchases and all loans. And generally speaking, the higher this number is, the better the economy appears to be. What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong is that the government calculates GDP to include what the government spends. But the government doesn't have any money of its own. It only has what it has extracted from us or what it borrows in our names. The government doesn't produce wealth, it consumes wealth. Thus, adding what the government spends to what the rest of us spend and claiming that that reveals a rosy picture is disingenuous at best and dishonest at worst. It is certainly not accurate. All right, imagine you have a swimming pool and you go to one end of the pool with a bucket and you fill it up and then you walk to the other end of the pool and you dump the water back in. Have you increased the amount of water or have you just moved it around? The answer is obvious. Yet that in a nutshell is what those who place so much faith in GDP would have you believe. They think that government taking tax dollars from one end of the economy and dumping them into the other end somehow creates wealth. They forget that every dollar the government extracts from taxpayers is one fewer dollar that taxpayers have to purchase or to invest or to, or to save. What is the big picture here? It is that the government lies and cheats to make itself look better than it is. It regularly breaks its own laws. It does things to us that it prohibits us from doing, and we let them get away with this. Today, for example, in a scene straight out of Orwell's terrifying novel, 1984, the federal government interfered with every broadcast TV station, every cable channel, including this one, and every radio station in the United States of America, ostensibly to see if it could do it, to determine if the feds have the means of taking over mass communication. How frightening is that? The president wants to know if he can wipe out the news. From Rush Limbaugh to NPR, from Bill O'Reilly to Rachel Maddow, from American Idol to CSI, all gone with the flick of a White House switch. Today it was just for 30 seconds. And for 30 seconds, the feds brought all electronic communications in the land to a halt, except for telephones and the internet. And we let them get away with this. It gets worse. The CIA buys and sells illegal drugs in massive amounts from foreign cartels, and it pays and it receives a fair market price. But the feds won't let you do so even if your medical needs require the drugs that politicians who want to control you think you shouldn't have. The feds sell military-style guns to foreign cartels just to see where the bullets propelled by those guns end up. And governments in America, which want to monopolize for us, do all they can to keep you from defending yourself. This is not an academic argument. In World War II, which was before the anti-gun crazies took over the government, the Japanese government was contemplating a land invasion of California. Admiral Yamamoto, the commander-in-chief of the Japanese Navy, advised against it. He said, you cannot invade the mainland United States. There would be a rifle behind every blade of grass. That was in 1943. The same is not the case today because of the government. And we let them get away with this. When will the government tell us the truth and leave us alone and defend our freedoms rather than assault them? In my new book, It is Dangerous to be Right When the Government is Wrong, I make the case that when the government no longer protects freedom, it is time to alter or abolish it. And where is that argument from? 
from what Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence.